So if you've just started streaming and your stream still looks like this, get ready because over the next few minutes, you're probably gonna learn a few things here and there. So in today's video, we're gonna be upgrading your Twitch stream with a whole bunch of new features that you can add to your install of OBS. Now these new features are gonna open up a brand new world for you to create something really, really unique and allow you to be super creative. So the way we're gonna be adding these new features is by installing a few little neat OBS plugins that I've been using for the past few years. And if you don't know what OBS plugins are, they're just little simple add-ons that you can add to your existing install of OBS to allow it to do things that it couldn't do before, like adding new effects, filters, or even just simple quality of life improvements. There are really dozens and dozens of things that OBS plugins can do. We won't be able to go through everything, of course, but we're gonna be going through the ones that I think are gonna be useful for most people. We're gonna be covering five plugins in this video, but if you'd like to browse the list of the 50 or so plugins that have already been released, go go check out the link in the description box down below. There's new plugins added all the time. Also, if you're interested in these types of videos or videos like this or anything to do with streaming, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm very desperate for viewers and attention. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, before we get started, it's worth mentioning that all the plugins we're looking at today only work with OBS Studio and OBS.Live. So if you're using Streamlabs OBS or XSplit or whatever, it's not gonna work for you. So don't tell me I didn't warn you. Now, in order to install these plugins, you wanna download the plugins, unzip them, and then go to where your OBS install folder is and just put in the contents of the zip file in that folder. If you wanna know where your OBS install folder is, it's normally in your C drive under program files, or if you've installed it somewhere else, just go search for that. And then once you've installed the plugin just relaunch OBS and then the new features should be there. So the first plugin we're gonna look at is called the motion effect and it's actually something I've already done a video on and what it allows you to do is take your scene transitions and animate your sources between them. So you probably have multiple scenes set up so you might have just the scene with your camera and maybe one that has your game and your camera. Now by default in OBS, when you switch between these scenes, there are a few pre-made transitions like a fade effect, there's a luma wipe effect, there's a few other effects there, but these are boring. So what motion effect does is it takes your camera or your game or whatever, and instead of just switching between the scenes, it actually takes your camera and animates it so it can grow to fill full screen or maybe you can take your game and shrink it down or slide it across the screen. It can do anything like that. It's kind of like when you're watching ESPN and there's like some dude talking and then they switch to footage of say a basketball game or something. It looks kind of like that. And it doesn't just work for cameras. It can work with literally any source. So like I said, your game, text, pictures, videos, anything can be animated. Not only that, you can set hotkeys so you can have something like maybe you press a button and then your camera slides off the screen and then press it again and it slides back on the screen. It doesn't sound like it does much, but it's just one of those fine details that make people watch your stream and think, wow, I've never seen this anywhere before. Now, if you want a more detailed guide on exactly how to set this up, go watch my previous videos from a couple weeks back or a month ago or so, so yeah goes through everything you need to know for that. The next plugin we're gonna look at is called Replay Source. And if you haven't seen Replay Source before, it's actually pretty nice. So with Replay Source, you can set a hotkey and when you press that hotkey, it's gonna replay the last maybe five, 10, whatever interval you want. Play the last few seconds of your stream. So let's just say something insane happens in your stream or maybe something really funny happens. You just hit that button and then boom, last five seconds of the stream plays. And the way this works is by adding a new source called replay input. When you've added a new replay input source, you have a choice of whether you wanna replay an entire scene or just the source like your webcam or your game. You can also set a duration for how long you want that replay to last and set it to loop or hide after a single play. I'm not gonna go through every single setting here. It's pretty obvious how it all works, but if you want me to do a full detailed tutorial to make this work, leave a comment or something, just let me know and I might do it. Just make sure that after you've added a replay input source, 
just go into your OBS settings under your hotkeys and then set a hotkey to load the replay. You also want to make sure that the replay import source is above your game and everything else so that's visible because the layers matter in OBS so if you put it underneath it's going to show underneath your game and then you won't be able to see it. It's just just make sure it's put in the right place. This next plugin has been covered in some of my previous videos and honestly it's probably my most used plugin that I use in every single one of my scenes when I stream. The plugin is called Stream Effects and out of all the plugins on this list, this is by far my favorite one. What Stream Effects does is it adds a few effect filters that you can add to any source in OBS. You can manipulate sources in 3D space, so like add a tilt effect to your camera, or you can add a drop shadow or outlines, or my personal favorite, you can add a blur filter to any source. What Stream Effects also does is it adds a new source type which is called Source Mirror. And what that does is it allows you to create an exact copy of a source, but because it's a separate source, you can add different filters to it. So let's say on one instance of your camera, you wanna have it in full color, but you wanna create a second instance of your camera that is all in black and white. Well, then what you do is you create a Source Mirror of your camera, then apply the black and white filter to that mirrored source. Now on their own, each of these filters doesn't sound like they do a lot, but you can get super Super, super creative with it like one thing I like to do is I like to create a source mirror of my game apply a blur filter to that mirrored source and then put that source underneath my game so it creates this really cool background or another idea which is totally not my idea is you can create like a bent camera effect so I did another video on how to do that but again it's not my idea I take no credit for it but that one's really cool as well. Just keep in mind, don't go ham on these filters because they can really eat up your GPU usage, especially that blur filter one. That one really eats up your GPU. So just be careful. You might want to have a two PC setup for this, but if you have one, it's really, really nice. This next plugin isn't really an OBS plugin, and it's the only plugin on this list that also works with Streamlabs OBS. It's called Reaper Plugins or Replugs. And what Replugs is, it's a set of VST plugins, which are used used to manipulate how your audio sounds to improve the quality of your microphone and make it sound better. So if you've ever wanted to process your audio, like add more bass in your voice or add more treble, or maybe you want to compress your audio so when you shout really loud, you don't kill everyone's ears and blow everyone's heads off, or when you whisper real quiet, people can still hear you. So if you want to install Reaper plugins, it works a little bit differently than all the other plugins on this list. So you want to go into the Reaper plugins website, download it, and install it, just make sure you install it to the default location because OBS looks for VST plugins in the C drive VST. I don't know what folder it is, I'll put it on the screen, but it searches for a very specific folder for those plugins. And if they're not in there, OBS just won't see them. After you've added the VST plugins, go into your microphone's audio filters and add a new VST plugin. Are they called plugins? What is it called? Let me actually check what it's called. Yeah, yeah, VS, VST plugin. Then in the drop down box, you want to select whatever plugin you want to use. You can try EQ, compression, noise gate, noise reduction filters. There's a whole bunch of different filters there you can try out. If you want to get an idea of what these plugins can do to your audio, here's a sample recording of my microphone with no filters applied. It's completely unedited and it's coming straight out of my microphone. And I just have a fan running in the background just to give you a worst case scenario. And now this is my audio with a couple of filters applied. I just added a noise reduction filter, a little bit of EQ to boost the bass and the treble in my voice, and a little bit of compression to get more consistent audio levels. But like with every plugin on this list, you can get creative. You don't just have to use these filters or these plugins for their intended use. You can do creative things with them. For example, what I've done with my streams is I've created two separate audio sources for my music. The first instance of my audio just sounds exactly how it should sound, just completely normal normal with no filters. But the second instance of my music audio source, I've added a VST plugin and I've EQ'd out all of the high frequencies. So I just added a low pass filter so that only the low frequencies get through. Then what I do is I take that unfiltered music audio source and use that for my introduction screen. Then when I switch over to my just chatting screen, I use that filtered audio source to create this kind of muffled sound, kind of like you're standing outside of a club. I don't go to clubs because I hate clubs, but I assume that's what it sounds like. Anyway, here's the result of my creation. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, there's Reaper plugins. The main thing you're gonna wanna use Reaper plugins for is for cleaning up your audio to make it sound better. So look up some tutorials for how to set that up or maybe I might do one in the future. Finally, the last plugin we're gonna be looking at is called the OBS Transition Matrix. This isn't gonna be one of those massive feature changes for OBS, but it's just one of those really nice quality of life improvements that allows you to just focus on your stream and less on operating OBS. If you've got a super advanced stream and you're like me, you've got like a billion different scenes and a billion different webcams and different sources and you have like different transitions going from one scene to another scene, you might be aware that OBS is really annoying and that you can only set one scene transition to use at a time. And let's say you wanna have it set up like you wanna have a stinger transition from when you go from your intro scene to your webcam scene. And then when you switch from your webcam scene to your game scene, you wanna use that motion filter plugin that we looked at, the, the first one we looked at. See what I did there? Yeah, the first one. Well, normally in OBS, you'd have to select your scene transition, transition the scene, then change your transition again, then transition to the next scene. And it's just too many clicks. Are you guys still following? I know I've said scene transition like 30 times in the past like 10 seconds. This problem is exactly what OBS transition matrix was designed for. So say you have scene A and scene B and you want to use a stinger transition from A to B but then when you go from B to C you want to use a fade transition. You can set all of this with OBS transition matrix. Now if you want to know where to set all this up just go to tools and transition override matrix and you should see a gigantic grid. Now the layout is a little bit confusing but basically what this is showing you is on the vertical axis it's going to show you all of your scenes and then on the horizontal axis it's also going to show you all of your scenes. The vertical axis defines the scene that you're changing from and then the horizontal axis shows you the scene that you're changing to and all you have to do is go through each cell right click it and select the scene transition you want to use for that combination if you just want to stick to whatever the default scene transition is just leave it on none so uh, yeah that's basically it those are five really cool plugins that you can install right now just remember the main thing with all these plugins is try not to just use them for their intended purpose and try to think outside the box and see how you can use it to do something that maybe you haven't seen before. Also, if you know about a plugin that I haven't covered in this video, let me know by leaving a comment down below or by joining my Discord. We got a great group of people that love to talk about streaming. So just jump in, pop into the Stream Good Text channel and I'll see you guys there. Also, if you wanna see what each of these plugins is capable of live, drop into my Twitch channel. I stream four or five nights a week on twitch.tv slash Nutella forever. You'll usually see me playing retro games, but sometimes I like to make alerts on stream or animations. So if you have a question, just pop on in, ask me a question there, and I'll be happy to answer your questions live. But with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Illuminati out.